Now, Michael Jackson might still get some kind of custody. What worries many of us is that he had complete custody. I think that they wanted to say, you know what, there's something rotten in Denmark there. We don't like the way Michael Jackson treats children. Now, you say we don't know what happened, and the court says we don't know what's happening with his own children. He's paid millions and millions of dollars for what he's done or allegedly done to other children. We now have a mother who says, for whatever reason, I was forced into giving up the rights to my children. The court is now going to look at what's in the best interest of his children. Nobody is going to, I will tell you, even if he seemed to be a perfect father, I think the courts are saying, you know what, maybe parents shouldn't be forced into this situation. It's an unusual situation for somebody to say, just giving up those rights because the other parent is so good. I think they're going to come down with a split the baby, and I think they're also going to say Michael Jackson's going to try to come out with something so that he doesn't have to have a full hearing of his involvement. Debbie Rowe's going to get at least some custody of these kids, or Michael Jackson might lose everything. Jane Velez Mitchell, Michael Jackson doesn't want the court to go into all the things he does as a parent, does he? Because if he does, as Bill says, he may risk losing everything. Absolutely not. I spoke with somebody who's very close to the Jackson family just a little while ago, and he described this as an absolute disaster, a catastrophe for Michael Jackson. First of all, at the very least, it means bye-bye Bahrain, because at the very least, Debbie Rowe now marches back into court with parental rights. That means she's probably going to get, at the start, some visitation. That means if Michael Jackson wants to be with his kids, he has to leave Bahrain, come back to the United States, so that that visitation order can be fulfilled. Even if the judge says she has the right to visit these kids twice a month, if he wants to be with the kids, he has to be here in the United States. Now, if he decides to thumb his nose at that order and remain in Bahrain, then they could issue a bench warrant for him, and it's a big embarrassment and a big legal problem. And what's especially galling is all the millions of dollars he has spent to try to get full custody of these kids. TMZ just reported today they have obtained documents which show the actual separation agreement for Four to five million dollars up front for Debbie Rowe, plus a mansion in Beverly Hills, plus nine hundred thousand dollars a year, which she got until he claimed that she violated the confidentiality and, agreement. And, by and is that interview. is that why she's changed her mind and wants to be with these kids? Not to be cynical, but she's not getting the nine hundred thousand dollars a year, Savannah. So maybe that changed her mind, and now she wants to be mommy. Well, there are a lot of people who look at Debbie Rowe that way. I mean, it's hard to understand what this woman's motivations are. This is a woman who stopped visiting with her kids, then wanted to terminate her parental rights, and then people say when the money dried up, that's when she went back into court seeking custody of these children. You know, she testified at Michael Jackson's criminal trial for the prosecution, although if you were there, you started to feel that she was actually still in love with this guy. But she testified these kids even did never have called her mother. They do not think of her as their mother. So when the court starts looking into what's in the best interest of these children, uh, they're going to look at what kind of parent Michael Jackson is, but they're also going to look at what relationship or lack thereof there is with Debbie Rowe. But Savannah, how does it end up then, Bill, if they're both lousy parents? Well, I don't think anybody, well, they, they might have DSS or some social services in their life forever. So then, or I'm not sure that I think that she, he's, she's going to get custody. I just think that it's unusual for one parent to have no visitation, no custody. I think that's what was being held over her, and I think that's going to change. And, and I don't even think she's asking this. for I've custody. spoken to people who are very close to this whole situation. I've spoken to bodyguards who have actually seen Michael interact with these kids. And the irony of all of this is, all the people I've spoken to say these children are remarkably well adjusted despite the scarves and all the crazy things that go on they're articulate they're glib they seem very well cared for and for all we know they're just on an exotic adventure in Bahrain uh, having fun with kids and not actually suffering sometimes ignorance is bliss Jane Michael Jackson is too odd, uh, too, uh, odd an adventure for me too exotic an adventure and I'm just telling you if I'm a judge I want a hand in that and if Debbie Rose says she wants to hand in it. That's their way Is for Debbie Rowe more. much better? Uh, she got on national television and said, here, take him. I gave these kids as a gift to Michael Jackson. Jane, I'd take really? them away. I'd take both of the, all the kids away from the two of them, but that's not my call here. The person I mean, that knows right, them best is Grace the nanny. Priscilla Presley will take you. Know, thank you all so much. We greatly appreciate it. Savannah, Jane, and Bill.
Now, tell me, um, I, I need to pass on congratulations to you and, and your lovely daughter, Lisa Marie. Does she like me? Is she okay? Because when she was on this show, I didn't think she liked me. Really? I don't think she had fun. <laughs> Sometimes I don't think she likes me either. <laughs> Uh, the same boat. No, but you, you got to walk her down the aisle. She got married in January yes. uh, to the lovely Michael Lockwood. Yes, he did. Was that was that a lovely day? A very proud moment for you as a mother? It was. It was great. I mean, she has uh, been thinking about this for a while, and she wanted to do it very privately. And regardless of what you read in the tabloids, that it was wacky. It was absolutely the most beautiful wedding. Um, it was very private, very traditional. And uh, it's the way she wanted to have it done. You have to remember, you know, she's this is her fourth time, so she wanted to do it right this time. And speaking of wacky, <laughs> speaking of wacky, how were you for a while there having Michael Jackson as a son-in-law? Oh, you really wanted to get wacky, right? Yeah. <laughs> how was that? Did he get an invite? Because I know Danny, Danny Keogh, her, her mm -hmm. pr uh, other ex-husband, right. was best man, which I thought was nice. Yes. Was well, Jack a bridesmaid or something? <laughs> someone that was very uh, suspicious uh, hanging around the alley with a mask on, right? <laughs> um, what, what did you ask me? <laughs> As a son-in-law, was he an interesting son-in-law? Very interesting. Very interesting. You know, I didn't know Michael really that well. Um, he was very much off to uh, the side a lot, and I don't think he thought that I liked him. So he kind of, you know, had his way of kind of, you know, being distant.
to see you. As a footnote to the whole affair, I wondered where all of this left the original fixer of Martin Bashir's interview. Because you fixed up that Martin Bashir program, and how, how, how did you feel about it? Well, I felt, uh, uh, well, I felt betrayed. Has it made life difficult for you and Michael? I mean, has it, has it spoiled your relationship with Michael? I think so. I do think so. Um, because um, probably Michael thinks that I betrayed him. So you made a he, mistake? I, I think I made a, 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 a mistake of taking Martin Bashir to, um, to Michael Jackson.